بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the unit one form, meaning and function but before we do that let's revise our previous lesson the writing of course we took the writing corner we have some uh, important points here when you write an opinion essay when you write an essay to give your opinion about something Note down what you know about the topic and collect new information. Note down, take notes about what do you know about this topic and take uh, and uh, some new information. Note down your personal views, other than information you found online, your personal views on the topic and express your feelings and uh, opinions. The third one, combine them together. Combine your views and feelings with the relevant information. So. Once you uh, write you, the information you found online or your uh, views about the topic, combine them and try to write your essay and organize, of course, each paragraph. And remember that it is your essay and your voice needs to come through. Remember, this is your essay, your opinion that has to come through. So these are today's objectives. Match the tag questions with sentences. So we'll be learning today about uh, question tags, if you remember them at the end of the sentence. Rephrase an information question into a polite form. Form correct tag questions, express obligation with must, mustn't, have to. Express necessity and lack of necessity. Polite ways to ask for information. So we'll be focusing on tag questions and how do we ask for information. So this is the first part here, the tag questions. We use the tag questions to check information. So this is the main use for the tag questions, is to check for information. Again, why do we use tag questions? Just to uh, check for information. We use an auxiliary verb and a subject personal pronoun. We use an auxiliary verb and the subject personal pronoun. With an affirmative sentence, we use a negative tag. With the negative sentence, we use an affirmative tag. So if the, uh, if, the, if the sentence is negative, we use an affirmative tag. If the sentence is uh, affirmative, we use a negative tag. So they are unlike each other. Let's take some examples here. You will go to the bank. Won't you? You will. Notice this here, affirmative, and here, won't you, this is a negative tag. You will go to the bank, won't you. The second one, you won't, again, this is a negative sentence. You won't work this Saturday, will you? So, if the sentence is negative, make the tag affirmative and vice versa. There's a cash, there's a cash machine on Main Street isn't there. There's a cash machine on Main Street isn't there. So remember to take the same uh, uh, helping verb or auxiliary verb and just make it, uh, if it's affirmative, make it negative. If it's negative, make it affirmative. For example, there's, it's the short uh, version of there is, there's a cash machine on Main Street isn't there. So we took is and make it negative. Uh, next example here, they are not going to go look for another job, are they? Again, they are not, they are not, here it's a ne negative and are here is affirmative. So we use the same auxiliary verb. They are not going to go look for another job, are they? They invested in the property market, didn't they? He didn't get the job, did he? Notice the question tag contains from two words, an auxiliary verb and a pronoun. Didn't they, did he, wasn't it. So it's just an auxiliary verb, whether it's negative or uh, affirmative, and the pronoun. Let's continue here. They invested in the property market, didn't they? He didn't get the job, did he? It was, it was the night shift you wanted, wasn't it? You are, uh, you are working today, 
aren't you? And remember, they're not really asking here. They're just checking for the information. The question tag's main goal is to check for information, not really asking for the information. It, it's like when you are sure that your friend is coming to your party and you want to ask him, you're coming, aren't you? So you know that he's coming. It's just that you want to make sure that he is coming. You say, you're coming, aren't you? So just here, you're asking him just to check for the information that you already know that he is coming. Here's the language builder here. Aside from using tag question to check for information, we also use tag questions to ask for agreement. So here's another use for tag questions just to uh, have agreement. Again, aside from using tag questions to check for information, we also use questions to tag questions to ask for agreement. We use rising intonation. What does it mean to rise in intonation? Your voice goes up. Your voice goes up when we check information. So if the question tag here, main goal is to check for information, in the tag, your voice will rise up. The intonation will go up. For example, you're going to come to the museum, aren't you? When I say aren't you, notice my voice is going higher here. So here is just checking for information. But falling intonation, meaning the voice goes down when we know the answer and are just asking for agreement. It means that when I know the answer, I'm just asking for agreement. I'm asking you to say, yes, I agree with what you say. Here's an example here. It's really hot, isn't it? It's really hot isn't it? So I'm not raising my voice in the question tag here. I'm just, uh, I just want you to agree with what I say. Another part of the lesson here, polite ways to ask for information with can, could, and would. Polite ways, not any way, a polite way to ask for information with can, could, and would. Let's take some example here. Excuse me, can, or could you tell me where the bank is again excuse me of course begin with excuse me can you or could you tell me where the bank is so this is a polite way to ask for information the second question can or could you tell me where the bank is again can or could you tell me where the bank is next one is would you be able to tell me where the bank is? And the last one, would you mind telling me where the bank is? So these are some polite ways to ask for information. When you find someone, excuse me, can you tell me where the restaurant is? Can you tell me where the bank is? You can say either can or could or would, just as like you want. Can, could, and would. Again. Could you tell me where the bank is or can you tell me? Would you be able to tell me where the bank is? Or you can say, would you mind? Would you mind telling me where the bank is? Next is polite ways to make requests with can, could, and would. So it's not asking for information now. Now you're making a request. You want something from someone. Again, a, po a polite ways to make requests with can, could, and would. The first one, can you give me your credit card details, please? Can you give me your credit card details, please? Of course, please is a polite word here. The answer is certainly. The second question, could you help me? Could you help me? Of course, it's a polite way of asking. Uh, the answer is of course. The third question, would you open the window, please? Sure. Would you open the window, please? For example, if you are in class and the air is stuffed there, you say to your friend, would you open the window, please? And he will say, sure. And then he will open the window. Could and would are a little more polite than can and will. This is just a small note here that could and would are just a little bit more polite than can and will. Of course, they are all uh, polite, but could and would are a little bit 
more polite than can and will. Language builder here, each modal verb can, could, will, would, etc. can have several different meanings. Of course, we know that. For example, the meaning of will in will you, uh, will you do well on the test next week is a question about the future. So will here, will you do well on the, text, uh, on the test is a question about the future. The meaning of will in will you open that door for me is a request. So one will is talking about the future. The other will is just a request for someone to do something. In the latter, the last one, in the latter case, we can substitute will for can. We can substitute will for can, could, and would with no change in the actual meaning. So when you say, can you open that, that door for me? Could you open that door for me? They are all the same, just making a request. So let's answer the exercise here, exercise A. Read the conversation between the bank teller and a customer. Use could, would, and question tags to complete the conversation. So we have a conversation, and you can notice the gaps in the conversation. So we'll be filling them with either question tags, could, or would. So let's begin uh, A here. Excuse me, I'd like to withdraw 500 euros from an account in 50 euro notes. In 50 euro notes. Notes. Do you mean it's the meaning of notes here? Yes, notes are the paper money. The paper money, we call them notes. So again, excuse me, I'd like to withdraw 500 euros from, an, from my account in 50 euro notes. Of course, madam, number one here, I have a form of identity, please. So this is a request here. Of course, madam. Number one is, yes, you can say can or could. You can say can or could. Can I have a form of identity, please? Or could I have a form of identity, please? Sure, here you are. Thank you. So you want the total amount in 50 euro notes. And the question tag here, you. Again, thank you. So you want the total amount in 50 euro notes and the word you notice here this is an affirmative sentence so the tag will be excellent so the tag will be negative so we say don't you you want the total amount of 50 euros uh, in 50 euro notes don't you yes that's right is there anything else I can do for you today madam yes please I'd also like to change some American dollars into Saudi Riyals. Again, yes please, I'd like to change some American dollars into Saudi Riyals. You charge commissions, you, you charge commissions, you charge commissions, this is an affirmative, so the tag should be, that's correct, negative, so you charge commissions, don't you? You charge commissions, don't you? Yes madam, we do. Our rates are displayed on the board. I see, thanks, and number four here. You mind telling me how many Saudi Riyals I will get for a thousand dollars? Again, I see, thanks, and number four is? Yes, would you mind telling me how many Saudi Riyals I will get for a thousand dollars? Of course, at today's exchange rate, you will get so and so and so. So this is the uh, filling the gap series. I can see that you think that it's easy just filling it with the question tags. If the sentence is negative, put the tag in the affirmative and vice versa. The second question here, work with a partner. Imagine that you work as a bank teller. Continue the conversation in exercise A using some of the words and ideas in the box. Include some responses from the customer, role play with the conversation, and take in turns be, to be the bank teller and the customer. So you and your friend will role play take turns. One is the bank teller and the other one is the customer. In the, uh, the part to exchange rates, to exchange the currencies uh, in the uh, bank. 
So we have some helping words here. Pay a utility bill, make a deposit, make an international payment order, a new debit card, open a savings account, transfer some money, apply for a credit card, buy health insurance, or apply for a mortgage. So you can choose any of these and just continue with the conversation with your friend using the question tags or would or could. For example, if the uh, customer here is want to buy health insurance, what do we say here? Yes, you can say, could you show me the health insurance form, please? And then maybe the teller will ask you, you want the health insurance, don't you? And so on. So you have to role play this exercise with your friend using the question tags, would or could. So continuing with the lesson here, uh, expressing obligation, obligation must, mustn't, and have to. What's the meaning of the word obligation? The, the, the word obligation means, yes, obligation means something that you have to do, something that you have to do, or something you must do. So how do we express obligations? Using must, or mustn't, or of course, have to. We use, we use must or mustn't and have to to express obligation in the present and the future. Notice here, we use them to express obligation in the present and the future, not the past. For example here, you must stop at the stop sign. Of course, when you see a, st uh, when you see a stop sign in the street, you must stop. You must or you mustn't or must not, of course mustn't here is the short version of must not, arrive late at work. Again, you mustn't arrive late to work. Next, uh, next example here, you have to slow down at this junction. You have to slow down at this junction. You have to be at the office at 9 a.m. So, have to and must are almost the same, it means something that you should do, and mustn't is the exact opposite, it's something that you shouldn't do. You mustn't speak at class, you mustn't, you mustn't speak at class, especially when the teacher is talking, you must pay attention, you must uh, wake up early to go to school, and so on. Here's a note here, mustn't means you are not allowed to do something. So what does it mean? Mustn't. It means that you are not allowed to do something. There is no past tense of mustn't. The past tense of must and have is had to. When you have to show obligation in the past, you say I had to. You don't, so if you want to say must or have to in the past, you say had to. But the, uh, the mustn't, the negative form of must, it doesn't have any past tense. In American English, have to is used more often than must to express obligation or necessity. In American English, they use have to more than must. Must not or mustn't means that something is prohibited, there is no choice. Mustn't, it means there's no choice. For example, you must not speak an exam, you will be disqualified. For example here, you mustn't or must not speak in an exam or, of course, you will be disqualified. Continuing with our lesson here to express necessity and lack of necessity, have to, need to, needn't, don't have to, or don't need to. So to express necessity, something that is necessary, or the lack of necessity, something that isn't necessary to do. So we use have to, need to, needn't, don't have to and don't need to. So let's read together here. We use have to and need to to express necessity in the present, past, and future. So to express the necessity that something is necess necessary to be done, we use have to and need to in all the tenses, present, uh, present, past, and future. We use the negative form to express the lack of necessity. Here's a question. What do you have to or need to do today? I have or need to finish a report for work, but I don't need to or needn't 
hand it until tomorrow morning. Another question here, example, what duties did you have or need to perform in your last job? What duties did you have to or need to perform in your last job? I needed or had to answer the phone and deal with customer complaints. Another question here, what will need, so here, take, we, here we are talking about the future, what will we need to do before we leave for the conference in Abu Dhabi? So what will we need? So here we are talking about the future. The answer is we will have to or we will need to, this is a uh, future of course, book an airport taxi. We won't or uh, we won't have to or we won't need to find a hotel. I've done that already. So you can see here we uh, need to and have to. You can do it with all the tenses, past, present, and the future. Doesn't or don't have to means that something is not necessary. Doesn't or don't need to, it means that something is not necessary to be done. When someone wants to help you, uh, but it's an easy task, you say, you don't have to come with me, you don't have to do this with me, I can manage by myself. So it's not necessary to help me. For example, I don't have to drive to work, I can take a bus. Should is used to give advice or make a suggestion that might be important, but it gives the listener the choice to take the advice or not. So when we say should, it means that it sometimes it entails that the listener have a choice. For example, you shouldn't cheat in exams. It's not fair and you will get, and you will get caught. So should is used sometimes to give advice, a strong advice, of course. So here's an exercise C with a partner. Discuss what you have to and must to do in the situations shown on the international traffic signs. Of course, you know all of these signs. You've seen them on the streets. Uh, no parking, no passing, speed limit, and no entry. So number one, what do you have to do here, number one? What can you say, have to or need to? Yes, you say you mustn't or must not park here. With the no parking sign here, you can say you must not or you mustn't park here. What about number two with the no passing sign? Let's see the answers here together. You say you mustn't or must not overtake this road. Again, you mustn't or must not overtake this road. What about the speed limit? the speed limit sign. Yes, you can say you mustn't drive faster than 70. You mustn't or must not drive faster than 70. And the last one, what can you say? Excellent. You mustn't or must not drive down this road. It's forbidden to enter. As it says here, no entry. You mustn't drive down this road. Exercise D here. Read page 2 again. If you remember page two from the listen and discuss with the, some professions there, like a surgeon or a, or a zoologist, choose one of the professions and imagine you are working in that job. What duties and responsibilities did you perform as part of your job last week? Write them next to each day. Tell your partner what you had to do. Use had to, didn't have to, needed to, and didn't need to. So you have here the table. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all the, uh, the days of the week. So imagine that you are working as one of these professions and write each day what did you have to do or what did you uh, didn't have to do in that day. For example, if you are a surgeon, you can say I had to perform uh, an operation at that day and so on. So role play with, your, with one of your colleagues and Imagine that you are working as one of these professions, maybe a zoologist, and answer this question. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu ala lanta astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.